Um, g'day everyone, I'm Berkey, um, I work as a solutions engineer inside HashiCorp, been here for a little while now. And today we're going to talk through something that I have done for years, and it's only got better recently with HP Packer, and I'm going to talk through golden image pipelines and why they're important. They're clinically boring, but you can solve this problem and you can save heaps of time in your day, which is or even year, whatever sort of metric you want to use. So let's get started. I'm going to do a little bit of an intro, a little bit of a context setting, and then just try straight into a demo. This is going to be a real world granted demo using um, HP Packer, using pipelines, using Ansible to show you how we use this in production environments. So uh, there'd be a lot of things here, but you get the slides, you get the recording afterwards. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, so let's talk through. So HashiCorp is pretty well known now for providing consistent ways of automating, deploying, maintaining infrastructure, both at the infrastructure level and application space. It includes securing identif identity services, as long as connected to those applications as well. So where we're speaking today and then part of the holistic stack that we work in is we're not focusing around the secure infrastructure space which forms the ground floor of most in, uh, enterprise infrastructure deployments that's in the packer and terraform land they may they sort of hold up everything above it but this is something that we can do that's easy achievable and uh put, adds quite a bit of value so why packer so let's talk through some of the problem spaces initially if you're using cloud or on-premises services like VMware or using cloud like Azure or AWS, you need to deploy images. Virtual machines, if it's uh, Kubernetes instances, will require a base image to harden, deploy. And depending on where you deploy that, it could be on-premises or on cloud. So I build up an AMI image. I write that, deploy that AMI or virtual hard disk or Google Cloud image or VMDK. And I have Ubuntu. I have one for Windows, I have one for Red Hat, and that takes time to handcraft this bespoke thing. Where that is a challenge is when I need to update it, right? It takes a long time to update these things. So how do we do this as code? And for us, we use a tool called Packer. Now Packer uses the HCL to HashiCorp configuration language, which we use, which is very similar to Terraform. Um, it makes that familiar way of writing and describing and attesting the way we want an image to look what's configured, how it's configured, where it's deployed. And it's used in such a way where we can use modular builders to say, I want this piece of packer code to be deployed as an image on AWS, on Azure, on vSphere. So one piece of code, three images, which is a fantastic way to manage the number of images. So if I had to normally bespokely handcraft these one by one, I now define a piece of code, uh, my packer template, and I can do that once and have three images or based on how many builders I have, a number of images, which is super. This has been around for, I want to say nearly 10 years. It's been around for like 13 years, uh, sorry, 17, 2013 onwards, right? And people are using Packer for a long time. Very mature and most often than not, you've used it before and not realized. What Packer is comprised of are builders. Builders to know where this code is going to be executed against. So if it's on-premises infrastructure or on cloud. Provisioners allow us to configure things after the provisioning of that VM. So the image gets spun up, gets configured and customized. Provisioner like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, go off and run on top of that to do post-task configurations. It allows me to go, okay, I'm going to install, use Ansible to configure a CIS, uh, Computer Information Systems Hardening Playbook, or something along those lines that allows us to do things afterwards, install an application, change the file system, whatever that may be. Post processes allow us to do things after the fact, like upload, change, configuration. And then data sources allow us to retrieve that afterwards um, and place that information somewhere. Now, what that means to do is I can build a base image and then further personify that with a billing project overlay or a marketing project overlay using that same image consistently and then have further modifications for different business units. This could be a, a, an application team. This could be, um, a, in this case here, billing and marketing have different requirements where it's the same underlying Ubuntu image, but gets further customized, which is super handy to provide consistency. Now, that introduces its own challenges. Once it's fantastic, we've codified it, we've made it, you know, you check you get all the, the benefits of GitOps and all of those notions of the version control, it introduces some of its own problem spaces. So it solves many, but has a couple of, you know, nagging edges, which here is the golden image, which version should I use? If I'm building it, you know, which is the latest version and I know it's hardened, 
what do I do to ensure that this image is compliant or it's secure? Is, it, is that same image for marketing on all of the clouds? Mm -hmm. Where do I store this information? Is it central? If I'm provisioning via Terraform, how do I know that I'm referencing the right AMI or VHD? You don't, right? You need to figure that out. So this is where something like HTTP Packer being a metadata multi-cloud image registry helps alleviate a lot of these problems. So it allows us to use metadata from the builds we make to go and append that data to a registry and allows us to you know, have downstream systems like pipelines, Terraform and other tools to interrogate that data and use it to streamline deployment. So for example, you can see here that I have information about my pipeline. I can see that my Ubuntu image under the bucket HashiCorp common has an image in both AWS, GCP and Azure. Um, so that consistent Ubuntu image is deployed. It's made, hardened, deployed, and retrievable in an easy fashion. From the notion of consumption, so instead of consuming, okay, I have to go ask the infrastructure team what AMI I need to use or what machine the image ID I need to use for um, my deployment, I can say, hey, instead of that, I am going to look up a channel. A channel is a pinned release inside a bucket to say, I'm going to use the channel production. And whatever the one that's assigned to that is, is being blessed by security or infrastructure, which means from a Terraform perspective, instead of having the, the delegate and control which exact object I'm looking up, I can retrieve, always guaranteed I'm retrieving the latest hardened image, which reduces the cognitive load on those writing the Terraform code and ensures I don't need to change my code when images change on the back end. It be a, a cipher change or a vulnerability comes through, the images that are updated, and I'm always using the latest one. So that means then now by referencing a central point, these multiple projects are always going to have um, the latest image. I noticed there's a question in the chat here, where, what's a bucket name? A bucket name can be anything you want. And I'll show that off in the demo. A bucket name could be Ubuntu, it could be Berkey, it could be Easy, HashiCorp, whatever that may be. It's a, where a collection of iterations, a build of an image reside. And that then allows us to essentially have this notion of a pipeline for images where I can have golden images always being created, always being built, always being uh, the latest hardened image, and ensuring that when I consume it from downstream sources, and I have, might have hundreds of consumers of, or subscribers to this uh, image, are always getting the latest version, which means that there's a lot less remediation. Time. So enough talking, onto the demo. So this is my topology. Now there's a lot going on here. So I'll walk through it very quickly and then demo it off. I'm gonna show off today the committing of code to a repo of our packer code, which will trigger off, you know, essentially do a merge, which will trigger off a pipeline, a GitHub action in this case. That GitHub action is going to open up uh, credentials and retrieve credentials from HashiCorp Vault for AWS, dynamic credentials. It's gonna retrieve off GCP credentials. It's going to retrieve, uh, build up an image for GCP and an image for AWS. Once that image is built, it's going to go run Ansible. And it's going to run Ansible to deploy the computer information standards security hardening baseline for Ubuntu 2004 to ensure that the image that comes out ensures that certain things like tempfs are off or certain things like the ability to take make a ramfs are off changing default directories, default permissions, the line to recommended good practice. After that build's complete, it's going to spit that information out into the HTTP registry from which I can control and deploy uh, that image. And then I'll show off a couple of things, what happens when, if I use it from Terraform Cloud, what happens to my environment using it versus uh, when I try and use an image that's not specified. All right, so I'm gonna back out of this presentation here and go through quickly through my code about three or four minutes and then I'm out. So my red, my, here's my registry information. So I add a stanza to my packer code saying HTTP packer. Here's information about my bucket. It's Ubuntu 2004, golden labels. I'm calling this uh, bucket Berkey Golden Ubuntu. And it's going to build for me a Amazon and a GCP image, right? And from there, you can see it's going to go off and do those sort of things for me based on the standard packer code. Now, this is not a packer session, so I'm not going to go too much detail into that. What I'm going to do here is push the, this change here, which I had before, and that's going to trigger off a workflow. Now, if I open up my environment here, 
I am going to go into my actions and see that I have now a build ex executing. This build here, close that one off. A build here is building off adjust bucket labels. So I'm changing some bucket labels here. And this pipeline is going off and running different packet code. So it's retrieve credentials from uh, Vault. It's going to retrieve credentials for Google Cloud. And it's going to go build these images for me automatically. Then run it and simple, and then spit that out. This takes about five minutes to do, depending on what task you're executing. This could be anywhere from two minutes to like 20 minutes, all right? And that builds up for me. What we will see here is inside my environment, I have my Berkey Golden in my, in my packet registry, my Berkey Golden Ubuntu bucket. I can see in here, if I look at iterations, I have my current one building, which is currently incomplete. I also have a whole history of different versions of images. So I can see here, if an image is deployed, let's see, image AMI 04D7, make this a little bit bigger. I can see here, I have my Google image, which shows off the image and the product name. What that means is when I start consuming this, I can make it very easy to consume by assigning a specific iteration that I bless to a channel. This channel could be development or production. And you can see here that I can change the current iteration to one of these ones available. So my production environment is 20, my development environment might be on iteration 21, which means I can test and release different versions and uh, allows us to do certain things there. So what this allows us to do is to provide that image. Um, I saw Barry Tell had a question, which is very apt and in, in my excitement, I may have missed. These base images are from like Ubuntu 2004 on the on the, uh, the specific clouds, right? This requires a base image somewhere, which is a plain vanilla stock standard Ubuntu image, which is provided by Canonical in this case. That might be Windows from Microsoft. It might be SUSE um, Linux or Red Hat's, um, you know, for, for RHEL. But these base images are referenced in the pack code. That build occurs, I can reference that there and go on and run it off of that, which is very nice. From a consumer workflow point of view, what does that mean for me? If I am Berkey and I don't actually build the images, but I'm actually running, um, I'm actually running and consuming that image. So in, traditionally what I've done to consume an image inside Terraform is done that. I've hard coded an image, which is very, very much a, workable solution. That means that every time a new image is available, I have to hard code this and update it. Right. So what we need to do here is then go into, you know, what we do, okay, cool, let's make this easier. I'm going to define the provide, ooh, Berkey, what have I done here? I've gone the wrong view here. I've got a consumer of that there. Instead of hard using the very, you know, image detail, such as the hard coded value, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a data resource and actually to interrogate the registry. So it logs into the registry, retrieves the Ubuntu Google image for the latest iteration, which means I don't have to start defining that every time. It's streamlined that workflow for me, which is quite nice. It means my downstream users execute their Terraform code and that runs. So that's really nice. What's additionally nice to this here is that if I am a Terraform enterprise or Terraform cloud user, what we have now is something called uh, run tasks. And what run tasks allow us to do is to integrate Terraform and HCP Packer neatly together. And that allows then for a couple of things. What this does is that I want to say, I want to attest the images being used by anyone going through Terraform Cloud are used correctly and are used in a way, in a fashion that is uh, using the correct images. So before a Terraform plan occurs, and you can see I failed this here for a specific reason. What's happening here is that I can go through here and say, okay, I want to ensure that the, when a plan finishes, that the image is valid. Now you can revocate images in HTTP Packer. You can get rid of them after a certain time. You can get rid of them after a certain vulnerability is discovered. There are ways to have things revoked based on the dynamic changing environment variables. And this allows us here to go, for example, I have triggered a revocation. There might be a reason to revocate it after a certain date, a certain time. What we've done here is the, in this case here, I've revoked an image because I've just demonstrated a, uh, you know, there might be a cipher mismatch or, or my customer who's a bank might not allow TLS 1.1. As such, we've revoked the image. I've tried to go and use that image. 
what you've seen here is HP Packer has said, I've scanned the registry and this image that you've pinned to is revoked. Please go and publish a new version, right? Which should happen automatically. And then it means next time I run this code, it will retrieve a new version. These are just some of the things that are possible with HTTP Packer. And it simplifies the cognitive load on that user to go and actually consume environments and make sure that they're using the baseline image that's correct. I mean, security teams are doing less uh, remediation work and it sort of streamlines that pipeline image process. If I have child images subscribed into it, if I have additional workflows, this is the center of something quite nice. Think of a river flowing into different tributaries. So in finishing of the slide pieces, and before I answer a couple of questions, um, I will just finish on this one here. So what it allows us to do is Packer HTTP simplifies some of the challenges with regards to hardening images, to building pipelines, and also discovery of the latest images. Things such as revocation, uh, checks, balances against the Terraform code are all part of this solution. It also ensures codified enforcement of code, which is nice. But I want to thank everyone for the time. It's awesome to have those questions because normally in these sessions, no one asks questions. So thank you for being involved. I hope it's got your interest peaked in building secure pipelines. Now, this is the tip of the iceberg. This, this is a really, might be clinically boring, but this is a really exciting topic that everyone does. Like, even if you're a container-only shop, you're generally you, you're deploying maybe the, the KS cluster beneath it, unless using pure AKS or EKS, right? So I'm sure it's relevant to many people out there. I'm excited by Packer because I have been using it for like 10 years. Come and talk, talk to me about it, right? My email is berkey at HashiCorp, follow up with EZ, but um, yeah, happy to chat about it. Thank you for your time and back to you, EZ.